Today we're going to create a help page you can access from anywhere in your Adobe Captivate project. So the idea behind this uh, actually comes from a client of mine who wanted to have the ability to jump to a special resources page or a help page from anywhere else in their e-learning project. So uh, today I thought I'd share the solution that we worked out together with my client and uh, hopefully you can do something similar in your project real soon. So what I did in this case here, the actual first page of my e-learning project is actually slide three. And so there's a couple of things that I've done on slide three. This is my title page here, create a help page you can access from anywhere in your course. And um, I'm using the built-in play bar controls in Adobe Captivate. So what I want to do is actually pause this slide at the end of the slides appearance. So I'm just going to add a pause uh, exit action. So it will pause and wait for the user to use the controls on the play bar. I've also added this icon here. Now this icon is going to act as sort of a special help function and I want to do a couple things to it. The first thing I want to do is I want to have it appear for the rest of my e-learning project so that at any time learners can click on this help icon to be brought to a special page where they can learn how to navigate the course and so on. So rather than appearing for a specific time or the rest of the slide, I'm going to choose rest of project. So this will always appear. I'm going to also ensure that it's always going to be visible and not blocked by something on those subsequent slides by making sure that that object is always going to be on top of everything else. The other thing we're going to do is use this as a button. Now, what I've done in this case here is I've created a help page which is actually slide two. And you can see that over in my film strip. We'll be going there in a few moments to make a few changes there as well. But the action for this, regardless of what slide you're on, will always be to jump to slide, in this case, slide number two. And you can do things like check hand cursor, disable click sound, things that I like because I'm not a big fan of the click sound that's built into Captivate. And uh, now let's go take a look at slide two itself. So on this slide here, I want to do a couple things. The first thing I want to do is set this return or undo button to become uh, a, an action that's going to take the learner not back to a specific page, but whatever page they happen to be on. So I'm going to check use as a button. I'm going to select actions. And rather than go to a previous slide or go to a particular slide, we can actually choose go to the slide last visited. In other words, wherever they came from. So we're going to select that. Again, hand cursor, disable click sound. Now the other thing I want to do with this slide is that uh, for the rest of the project, I am going to show the play bar along the bottom. But because this help page uh, takes them to a different part of the course, I actually don't want to show the play bar. So on enter of this slide, we're going to choose hide play bar. And we'll continue playing the project because we want to hear uh, whatever narration is occurring. And then the at the end of the slide, we're going to pause and wait for them to do something else. In this case, the only option will be to return to whatever slide they started from. Now, to make this all work, we obviously don't want to see the help page because it's slide number two. So there is a slide number one. Slide number one is only a fraction of a second long. And we just need to set the on exit action of this first slide to jump to slide three. In other words, bypass our help page. So in this case here, we're going to jump to slide and we'll choose slide number three. We could optionally um, also um, hide the play bar at this point here as well. So that just means that we're going to have to make sure that we're showing the play bar 
on all of the subsequent slides. So a little bit of an extra step, a little bit of extra work, but easily done. If you had multiple slides where there were additional actions, you would need to write that up as an advanced action that included hiding the hiding or showing the play bar as needed, plus whatever actions you need to occur. So on this case here, when we arrive on slide three, let's make sure that we show the play bar and we'll pause at the end of this slide. And similarly with our subsequent slides as well, uh, let's just adjust this so it doesn't interfere with our help button here. On uh, subsequent slides, we'll again have to make sure that we're showing the play bar, continuing playing the project, and then we'll just pause at the end of the slide, waiting for the learner to click one of those functions. So I think we're all set here. Let's do a preview of this project and see if I got it right. So as you can see, it very quickly jumped to my first page, uh, create a help page you can access from anywhere in your course. We can go to the next slide. And at all times, this help icon is available to us. So if I click the help icon, it brings us to our special help page. It hides the play bar. So the only option for learners is to use this button right here, which will bring them back to whatever slide they left from in the first place. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at CaptivateTeacher, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.